Hello everyone, welcome to um, Ben Nevis. This is obviously the first um, trip that we've done and the first conference that we've ever done at a mountain. So um, I hope everyone's enjoyed themselves so far. Um, we're about to move it. Good crowd there. Um, we're obviously about to move into um, some speakers, um, but obviously just want to thank everyone for coming along today. Well, I'm, I'm Paul. Um, I'm, I'm more known on Twitter than anywhere else, but I'd like to thank you all for bringing me back to a British mountain, which is where it all, all began for me. Um, and that's what I want to talk about is how I built my personal brand. Being, being a personal brand, it's, it's hard to say that that is the way it's got to go because it's a very, it is a personal thing. Um, there, there are things I've learned for myself along the way that I can say, they, do, they would do it wrong, they're doing it wrong. But again, I would never, I don't say I'm a social media expert or you are doing it wrong because they'll either learn or they're happy doing what they're doing. The only reason I've got to where I am now is because everything I've done, I've done it because it makes me happy. And through that and hard work and staying with it, I've managed to get to 330,000 followers, all of which are not bought. I get asked every day, do you buy your followers? No, I haven't bought a single one. It's just pure through years. I've been on Twitter since early 2008. There was no, hardly any companies around. There was hardly any celebrities around. So the, it was like a cult at the time. If, Twitter was this thing that people don't understand and Stephen Fry was the only celebrity that anyone knew or Alyssa Milano. <clears throat> so what happened was I, I was sat in an office in Manchester putting on a lot of weight. I thought I need a hobby so I took off to the mountains up into Cumbria and I, I got an iPhone when they first came out and it was about the time that TwitPic started. So I just, here have a look at this and it, it kind of like grew and grew and grew. I started doing it every weekend, taking pictures, tweeting them. Then the mountains got more extreme. So what happened was I was stuck on about 10,000 followers for about six months, happy, socializing. It was all a social thing, no blog, no nothing. Then suddenly I went to Argentina and climbed Aconcagua. Um, now, when you're in these extreme places, mobile signals, you know, even on Ben Nevis, it's, it's not that good. So I was taking the odd picture whenever I could and sending it out. So I went down with something like, I went started climbing it at the beginning of the three weeks with 10,000 followers. Came back down to nearer 30 after three weeks. I thought, ooh, <laughs> there's something in this. Then suddenly tourist boards, this is, it was all one big accident. Tourist boards suddenly said, he's a walking brochure. So on a marketing front, the early marketers in, in tourism said well hang on a minute if he's live tweeting from wherever we send him it's 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 showing our country to the world rather than waiting for them to come and have a look and decide what they want to do or search the internet and it puts the idea straight into people's heads so what started was I, I went to Norway I went dog sledding I was I'm, I was privileged to go dog sledding see the northern lights stay in an ice hotel and this was all live tweeted which was again new at the time so after that, it just snowballed and snowballed and snowballed and somebody said, you need a blog. So again, back to the personal thing, most people now join Twitter or Facebook because they've got a blog. They don't think of the psychology of the people that are using it. Now, I still stick to my roots in that if anybody shares me, I appreciate them. So when I come back, down from this mountain. People have been sharing the pictures I've been sending out. I will make sure I sincerely thank them, because I do, I wouldn't be enjoying it if it weren't for them. I, what's the point in sending out a picture? And then, oh, yeah, thanks, cheese easy. And there's, no, there's none of that, it's sincerely thanking them and sharing others. If something interests me, I'll share it. Now, again, it goes back to personal preference. If I see a, a Twitter stream where they're just sending that they're a professional photographer and they want to be the professional photographer on Twitter. If they're not sharing anyone else, who's gonna, human psychology says, they're gonna lose half the people they would normally 
who are responding to them because they'll just go, oh, he doesn't even talk to us, he's not interested, he's, he's elite, he's not going to talk to us. Whereas if you are sincere with them, people, more and more people, and it goes back to crowdsourcing as well, if you involve people and you appreciate the people that you're involved in, then it grows and grows and grows and every time I go on a trip now, it creates yeah, I get you get the buzz and you, I get the enjoyment from the buzz that it's creating and I gain new friends so, and, it, and then again it snowballs and snowballs and snowballs um, so where am I now where am I now um, with it, it, it's come down to a bit of there's a bit of responsibility in what I do in that um, as far as marketing goes if, if as a personal brand, I want to keep the personal brand. I don't want to sell out to a travel company. That's a personal choice. If I suddenly went down the route of a specific travel company, it, it just stinks. It just stink, as, as a personal brand, it just stinks of pure advertisement. I would lose half the people that have been following me around. When it's for a tourist board, it's it just creates a lot more because people will say who's paid for this who's who, who's paying for all these trips that you're going on you don't fund it yourself how do you work what do you do and i said no i've been invited i've been invited and i'm showing you what i'm doing there's no you know as a personal brand i've had to work hard 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 and never give up that is the one thing so many people how many people have heard that you join twitter six months later nobody's talking to me i give up i give up with twitter now I see people mourning and I'm never ever been negative. How many people go on Twitter to s slag people off? It's, there's hundreds and thousands of them. I see it every day and it's like yawn, yawn, yawn. Yeah, you might get a, a million retweets for that one witty tweet that was slagging someone off, but not half the people will be like, don't talk to him because he'll just, he'll have a go back. So basically everything that I've done and built up to where I've got it's sharing to be shared be sincere and especially when you come into your thank yous or be sincere in what you're sharing I, I mean I won't share anything I don't like just to catch the attention of a celebrity or to catch the attention of someone if, if, some, if you if you post a picture tomorrow and I see it on Twitter and I, oh, that's, that's a really nice picture that I'll share it that's that's really good you know it gives give other people a leg up and then everyone else is giving each other a leg up. It goes back again to crowdsourcing. So the, f the four things I always remember, never give up, share to be shared, be real and be sincere. The being real is, it's an often used cliche in, uh, in Twitter, but it's never put into practice enough. Um, so here I am now, privileged to be here with you lot on a mountain talking about how I got to where I am now. Thank you. Thank you.